and ready. Okay. And now your book has eyes. Okay. And they you see as change. Um, my experience is that people get a little bit confused with that because to get the change, you've got to get the initial and the final and then do the subtraction. So in one square, you've got to do three things at once. Um, and it's easy to make mistakes. Okay, so I fiddle with it and I do rice. So this, the R stands for, these are all in numbers of moles. So this stands for the number of mole that has reacted. Okay, this is the number of mole that you have initially. This is actually the concentration, not the change. This is the concentration at equilibrium. And the E stands for the equilibrium, but it's the number of moles at equilibrium. So the only one that's not a number of mole is the concentration. And in this one, I would always write the volume. Now, because we know that N is equal to CV, we're going to get the number of moles. So N over V equals C. Sometimes, especially if it's not 1, here because the volume is 1, N is equal to CV. If V equals 1, therefore N equals C. It doesn't really matter. These will be the same. But if they're not, especially if the volume is 2, I tend to put a line in here and divide it. In this case, we're dividing it by 1, so it doesn't make any difference, but put a line in there and divide it by 5 or divide it by 2. I've got to remember now because I always walk around. <laughs> I'll talk around. Um, so that we remember to change it to a concentration because that's a classic, especially if it's a multiple choice. You know, they'll obviously put A or V when people have calculated the equilibrium constant not using the concentration by using the number of moles. Does that make sense? So that's an easy thing to do. So Fill in the table. So it says 0 0.70 moles of PCL3. So initially, we had 0 0.70 moles of that. And I've, I'm putting them in underneath their equations. And 0.5 mole of Cl2 are allowed to reach equilibrium in a one litre container. So these two were reactants. So initially, I actually had zero mole of that because that's a product. I didn't put any product in there. Occasionally, they will put a bit of product. But it's rare. Most of the time, we don't have any product there. So we started with this, and we have none of that. Okay, I didn't write the rest of the question, did I? <laughs> Helps if I write the rest of the question. So, and it said allowed to come to equilibrium. And then it says at equilibrium, so here, at equilibrium, there is 0.3 mole of PCL3 remaining and we've got to calculate K. There's equilibrium constant when they go back to the value of K. So here it tells us there's 0.3 moles of PCL3 remaining at equilibrium. So we fill in the table. So I've got two columns here of that filled in. So if I started with 0.7 and I've got 0.3 remaining, can I get the amount that reacted? Yep, how much? 0 0.4. Pardon? 0.4. Yeah, so I know that 0.4 of that reacted. Now the bonus is that if 0.4 of that reacted, because these are one to one, how much of this would have reacted? 0.4. So if I started with 0.5 moles and 0.4 reacted, can I work out how much is that equilibrium? How much is that equilibrium? 0 0.1. 0.1. Does that make sense so far? Now if 0.4 of this and 0.4 of this reacted, how much of this must I have got? Because they're one to one. I must have got 0.4 moles of that. And that's how much I'll have at equilibrium of that. Does that make sense? Okay. Because if I've got 0.4 of this reacting and 0.4 of that reacting, I must get 0.4 of that. This might react because we had none to start with, so none of it reacts. But I will get 0.4 of it at equilibrium because 0.4 of that reacted with 0.4 of there had to give me 0.4 of that because they were one to one. Is it making sense, Josh? Yeah? How did you get the point one? Um, we had 0.5 initially. And we had 0.4 reacted, so I take those away and I get the 0.1. That's what's left over. Does that make sense? It would be nice. You can do 
closer and then you sort of subtract in the right manner. Okay, I'm sure Miss Caroline wouldn't like the fact that we're doing a subtraction the wrong way around. But rice is an easier word to remember than ISA. Does that make sense? So then we've got those. These are the number of moles. The bonus here is because this is a one litre flask, we know that concentration is N over V. So now we've got all those concentrations, which for these are exactly the same. Keep in mind, they might not always give you a one litre flask. You might get a 500 ml flask or a two litre flask or a three litre flask. So you do have to work out your concentration. So we come over to here, we've got to get K. First thing to do is get the expression. Now you, some of you guys should be able to tell me what will go on the top line of the expression, Brody? Uh, the product. Yep, the product. So the concentration of PCL5. Because there's only one of them, it's to the power of one, which we don't normally write. And on the bottom line of that will be, yeah, yep, the reactant. So PCL3 times the Cl2. And we've got those concentrations. On the top line, our PCL5's concentration is 0.4, divided by 0.3 times 0.1, and that's going to equal 40, 13.3, is that right? I've got to remember that, you know, my brain is, doesn't have to work in the same way. It's more stress than normal, can I tell you? 0.4. Point three three. I can't. It can't be because I've done something wrong there. Maybe hang on. If I turn the page in the book, it probably tells me my answer. Yeah, thirteen point three. I pressed something wrong on the calculator and did it right in my head. <laughs> that becomes point oh three, and all I did was make that forty divided by point three. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Forty divided by three. .3. That's how I did it in my head. So I had it right. There's still one thing missing. What is missing, Jazz? The unit, because keep in mind, equilibrium, we don't always have the same units. So on the top line, I've got a capital M, which I always write it like that. You can write mole per litre if you want. You can write mole per litre. But in an exam, I wouldn't want to be writing that out. Okay. Molar concentration, capital M, is fine. That's our convention. That's our technical language. So we've got M over M times M, which gives me M over M squared, which then gives me M. I take that to the top line, becomes m to the negative 2. So the unit then becomes... Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. back to indice laws. Yeah. And we must remember to do that. I think we had three sig figs and everything up there. Oh no, I only had two, didn't we? I think I kind of gave you two sig figs, didn't I? I think I did that on purpose. Let me check the sheet. But I think on the sheet I purposely only gave you um, two sig figs. Because you can see how that comes out to 13.3. Let me double check I've got the sheet here. Oh my god, I just can't see, but can't see without them. Yeah, I purposely only gave you two because that's a really easy mistake, isn't it? There's only two sig figs on the sheet. Two here, two here, and there was only two here. So the actual answer is 13 m to the negative one. Does that make some sort of sense to you guys? Yeah, so much easier to do it at school than have to do it remotely. Sure. Yeah, here, Liam's going to take Liam taking the video. So yeah, I'll leave it there if you want to take a photo on the way out. That's fine. Okay. There are quite some, can I say, the equilibrium chapter questions in your book, these questions are good questions. Okay, Some of the questions in the book, some of the electrolysis ones and the redox ones were not so good. But the actual questions for these, the rice questions in your textbook, are actually good questions. Yeah? Okay. I want to go through another one remotely, probably in a single. It's going to take a whole half an hour to do that. Does that make sense? Um, these guys are sending me messages. Chat. That's okay. Well, let's see what they're saying. Oh, 
probably telling me you can't see. Why did it send that big button? Huh? I don't know what they're doing. Don't know quite what's going on here. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they're talking about Elon Musk's um oh, Elon Musk's baby's name. Yeah. The man's crazy. It's it it's that same old, you know, Elon Musk is a bit like um what's his name? Einstein. You know, he's a bit crazy, he ran out in the rain with no clothes on. I think Elon Musk seems a little bit in the same vein. Does it make sense though guys? Yeah, I will go through another one remotely where we don't have a, a leader just to make it and we don't have one to one because that adds the complexity of, to it okay um but yeah i tend to use rice not ice which is in your book okay because there you get reacted and you get at equilibrium you can do the subtraction whereas they get you to find the amount at equilibrium the amount that you had initially and work out the change they call c change um, but you've got to do those three things in one hit it's really easy to make a mistake yeah, everyone's being very quiet. Okay. Now, is the process, I want you to be honest with me because you know, I'm not trained in remote learning. I'm the clueless in this stuff. Okay, Clark's gonna try and fix my screen today so that I can put up, I haven't been able to put the sheets up on the screen for you. Um, he thinks maybe because I've only got kid permissions and not teacher permissions. Um, he's gonna try and look at that period four today for me so we can try and sort that because it's really annoying me. Um, I'm going to do, I probably will do some spot tests via a Google form into the future, so be mindful of that, that they will happen. Uh, but yeah, does a flipped, we call it flipped learning. So giving you the clips, asking you to read before you come in, is that making it easier for you, do you think? Yeah. Okay, because we're going to go to Le Chatelier's principle. So I want to do another one of these for you next lesson, but then I maybe the lesson after that I'll leave you to watch some clips on him and do some reading, and then I'll come back in and talk about it after that. Is that okay? Gives you some more flexibility for your day as well, I guess. That if you don't want to do your double chem in the morning, you can go and do it later that day and sleep in or do it beforehand. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to take criticism of what's you know like the remote learning stuff because like I said I just I find it hard. I'm sure you guys find it hard and um, we're doing the best we can but you know I'm no expert at the remote stuff all right you're free to go we need to go out carefully though